The PlayStation Classic included the ultimate arcade racing game, Ridge Racer Type 4. Now that's possibly the most highly acclaimed version of Ridge Racer on the PlayStation 1. Now sure, there are plenty of questions over the gaming lineup on the PlayStation Classic, but Sony would have been even more idiotic to exclude this. And yeah, the controllers are perfect replicas of the originals, so you should be getting the perfect Ridge Racer Type 4 recreation, right? Wrong. If you want the proper Ridge Racer experience on PlayStation 1, you're going to need one of these. Let me introduce the Jogcon. PlayStation controller with a steering wheel plunked in the middle that Namco bundled with special edition packages of Ridge Racer Type 4. It takes everything from one of your large steering wheel controllers and squeezes it into a package akin to a regular controller. Hello fellow gamers and this is the way to play Ridge Racer on original PlayStation and I'm going to show you why. So here in the UK, the only way you could get a Jogcon back in 1998 was to get it in a special edition bundle with Ridge Racer Type 4, though in Japan they were also sold separately. Now not many games supported the Jogcon fully, uh, that was Ridge Racer Type 4, V-Rally 2, Breakout and, in a slight twist, PlayStation 2's Ridge Racer 5. Now the Jogcon can be set to emulate Namco's other controller, that twisty little Negcon, but that's not really recommended as it's quite awkward to use the acceleration and brake while you've got this configuration. Now those of us lucky enough to pick up the special edition of Ridge Racer Type 4 was able to give this a go. So just having a closer look at the Jogcon, it's got more or less a PlayStation controller layout. All of the buttons are where you would expect to find them, and it still has a pair of hand grips. They're a little bulbous at the bottom, but it's still quite a comfortable controller. Now there's no way you could overlook the 3 inch wheel right there in the centre. It spins freely all the way around, and it has a little dimple where you can choose to place your thumb when you're turning the wheel. Though if you look in the manual of the game, that recommends that you use the grips around the edge of the wheel to steer using both of your thumbs. So when you plug this into your PlayStation, it's going to simply mimic a regular PlayStation controller. But to use the wheel, you're going to need to change the mode using the dedicated mode button in the centre of the controller. So now we've got the mode switched and we've got the game booted up, let's get set up. Now the first part of call, we've got to calibrate that wheel before we start. The reason for this is because, well, the Jogcon's got this nice little feature that you you tend to find in regular steering wheel controllers. It centres itself when you're not turning it. It will self-centre itself only on compatible games, so on those you'll need to make sure it's centred correctly before you continue. Next we need to set up the turning restrictions. We've got 90, 135 and 180 degrees. It's simple enough, the higher the number, the more you have to turn the wheel in order to turn corners. The 90 degrees setup is better for quick reactions or smaller hands, but 180 degrees is more suited for those that are more familiar with a regular steering wheel. The last step is to set the force feedback. Now this isn't rumble, this controller doesn't have that kind of force feedback. But instead, and I think this is pretty clever, it's the force that's applied against you as you're turning the wheel. This is something that you tend to feel when you're driving a real car in the real world if you're, you know, if you're turning it rather vigorously. Now the default controls for this controller on Ridge Racer Type 4, it puts the accelerator and brake on the opposing shoulder buttons instead of what is uh, typical like the cross and square or cross and circle at the time. But that's fine because it's probably expecting our thumbs to be a bit busy with the wheel. So, now that we're set up, and normally this is a lot quicker than what I've just shown you, 
Let's get into a race and just see how well Namco made this Jogcon work. So we'll just cover the basics first. A gentle turn of the wheel is going to turn your car. Obviously, it's not rocket science. But it's not going to take you long for you to reach that first corner. And when you're turning the wheel, you can feel it pushing against you as you're turning around the corner. And even more so if you're going faster or if you're, if you're turning sharper. I find that this gives you really rather vital information about how far you can turn and how effective your turn is when you're going around the corner. I mean there's no point in turning the wheel any further if all you're doing is understeering and veering straight into a brick wall. But obviously this is Ridge Racer. You're going to want to drift around a lot of these corners. So when you reach a corner and you're making the back of the car slide out, the wheel starts to it feels a little loose, but only in the direction that your car is turning, not in the direction that you're actually going. In order to get out of the slide, you can use opposite lock and you'll start getting traction again. But when you do this, again, you can feel the wheel pushing against you as you turn it. It's this kind of feedback that you can't reproduce, even with a, a dual shock. Be careful when you're going around those corners though, else you might spin out and hit the barrier. If you hit the barrier fast enough, the wheel of the Jogcon will jolt from side to side. You're feeling the impact directly in the wheel, and the jolt can disorientate you in no way that a simple vibration could, as it directly affects your steering. Another really nice attention to detail is when you're getting air on the jumps. When you're airborne, the Jogcon wheel becomes extremely loose in all directions. When you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Because your wheels are off the ground, so the road isn't there to restrict the turning of them. I mean, it's, it's not something that I ever think about when I'm playing other racing games, but it makes complete sense, and it really helps with the immersion. All of these little details, they all come together to bring a whole new level of realism. Ironically, to a 22 year old arcade style racing game. There's so much more that you need to take into account and it makes the game all that much more fun to play. Now a lot, if not all, of what I've covered probably comes naturally to those who are using like full size steering wheel setups uh, with all of their racing games. But to have all of that in a really small controller form factor. That's impressive, and it's something that I believe all racing game enthusiasts should try out. So to summarise, Ridge Racer Type 4 and the Jogcon. They go together like fish and chips, tea and biscuits, a beer and a curry. The Jogcon makes Ridge Racer all the better for it. Now even though the Jogcon isn't fully supported on a lot of games, you should still consider adding one to your gaming collection if you haven't got one already. So if you're interested in getting one in a special edition package, quite often you're looking at paying around about 65 to 70 quid right about now. However, I'd recommend just not even bothering with that and just getting both of them separately. The Jogcons individually are popping up on eBay for around about 15-20 quid, and the game can be grabbed for Round about a fiver, maybe even less, if you haven't got that already. Because, you know, you'd be a bit daft to pay over 40 quid for a small cardboard box, wouldn't you? So there you go, that's the Jogcon. Caters to a little bit of a niche market, but it's still very good nonetheless, and I'd recommend it to anyone who's a fan of racing games. But that's all for now, thanks very much for watching. Please let me know what you thought of the video with a like or dislike down below. And let me know what your experiences are with the Jogcon if you have one already. And there's always the subscribe button if you want to see more. But anyway, thanks again, and I'll catch you all next time.